So we centered on that. Can't go over a picture behind. Hello, my name is Paul Lees, and I'm the chairman of the board for the Boys and Girls Club of Newport County. Welcome to our first and hopefully last virtual annual meeting. We are thankful and we appreciate you joining us today to hear about all the good work that the club has been doing during the pandemic and our plans for the future. This year, the club celebrates 65 years of serving our community and continuing on our mission, which is to inspire and enable all young people, especially those who need help the most, to realize their full potential as productive, responsible, and caring citizens. Imagine that, 65 years. I've been involved with the club on a board level for about seven years now, and I became the chairman of the board back in January of 2020, right before you know what hit. It's an honor for me to be in this leadership position during these challenging times, following so many other local names that have preceded me in serving our community, using the Boys and Girls Club as the conduit. In January, we welcomed a new slate of officers, and I'd like to introduce them to you now. Paul Lees, myself, as the chair. Stacy Mills is our vice chair. Jerry Schaefer, who you'll hear from shortly, is the treasurer. And Laurie Burns, our secretary. Also, please join me in welcoming our three newest board members. They are Mark Egan, Heather Flaherty, and Sue Metzger, who have recently begun their three-year term. And with great gratitude, I'd like to acknowledge the board members who are rolling off the board at the completion of their terms. They are Tom Eberhardt, three years, Pamela Ford, nine years, Frank Flanagan, who also served as our legal counsel, six years, and Kim Herlinger, 12 years. If we were all here in person, I'd be hesitating right now for a very long, well-deserved round of applause. So Joe and I, we can do that. <laughs> Uh, their leadership has helped lead the club to where we are today, and we know they will remain close to the club and continue to support our youth as we move forward, continuing to work on our mission. So at this point in the meeting, I'd like to introduce you all to our executive director, Joe Pratt. And Joe, please take it from here. Thank you. The club has proven time and time again to rise to the occasion and during this crisis, we were truly the safety net for our members, their families, and our community. When the crisis first broke, we were invited to work with the State Departments of Health, Human Services, Education, and the Governor's Office to develop plans to offer emergency childcare for our first responders. While the state didn't pull the trigger on this effort, Due to the rising trends and the uncertainty that existed in the early days of the pandemic, the work and the preparation paid off. Not only have we forged strong working relationships with our state partners, but the work prepared us to be amongst the first to reopen our childcare as soon as allowed, June 1st. And to do so in a safe environment with the proper protocols, health screenings, masks, social distancing, and extra staff and maintenance to make sure we continue to provide that safe environment. We were also amongst only a few to open our outdoor summer camp at the end of June. Again, the work with our partners helped us to develop the proper protocols, not only for camp, but for transportation, which was so important for us to get our members to and from our facilities and our services. These transportation protocols would also serve the state and our local school districts well as they prepared for school to be reopened in the fall. Following camp, our staff used all of the lessons learned to provide seamless service for our school year programs. We hired additional staff. We opened when schools were closed. We followed our safety protocols, and we even served some members full-time five days a week as they remote learned from the club with the help of our staff. We were, in effect, a de facto school without the tuition dollars. Our team learned that smaller, more consistent groups with dedicated staff 
could lead to improved outcomes. In some cases, our kids were making the honor roll for the first time ever, thanks to the dedicated support they received. We listened to our parents. We had surveyed them to identify the needs and we responded by beefing up our academic support and our schedule to support them when the schools were closed. We also heard from some of our families as they expressed concerns about putting meals on the table and securing cleaning supplies, especially in the early days of the pandemic. I'm proud to say with the help of our partners, restaurants, caterers, our fellow nonprofits and funders like the Doris Duke Charitable Foundation who specifically approached us to lead a collaborative effort to address the families that were most impacted by this COVID crisis. And I'm proud to say together, we've provided weekly meals, support for childcare assistance, extra academic help, targeted academic help, care packages, cleaning supplies throughout the pandemic. Our parents and our families share their appreciation for these efforts. This summer, our work continues. We are expanding our staff and partnering with Fab Newport in the North End to offer the Newport experience, which is connecting kids to the outdoors, to surf, to sail, to coding, and to career exploration opportunities. And our Camp Rovner will have expanded capacity as COVID regulations ease. I'd encourage all who are interested to call 847-6927 or to visit our website, www.bgcnewport.org for more information and to register. In addition, uh, I wanna kind of give a shout out and say we're pleased to have our adult members back in the facility. Many of you are aware our adult members use our pool and our fitness center early in the mornings, and it's great to see their smiling faces back with us. Throughout the last year and a half, while we have continued to serve and adapt uh, to serve our families, we have stayed true to our plans and to best practices. We've recently completed our three-year strategic plan and a master facilities plan to map out both short and long-term capital needs. As we enter our 65th year, we are moving toward our first ever comprehensive capital campaign to provide sustainability and predictability to ensure that our club can continue to provide these safety net services for our members, for our families, for the community for years to come, despite the challenges that might arise. This spring, we have actively engaged in a feasibility study and are looking forward to assessing the result over the next few months. Finally, a thank you and an appeal. We didn't do this work alone. It takes the entire community, like many of you that are with us today, and so many others, volunteers, donors, our board members, our community partners that have gone the extra mile to quickly respond. So a big thank you to everyone uh, who's on the call today. Uh, and a special thank you to our families and our kids for having the trust in us to continue to provide services to them. Uh, and finally, I'd be remiss if I didn't extend a giant thank you to our staff who came to work every day, put aside their own safety concerns to be here serving our members. I cannot say enough about the staff, truly the best in the business. Just as we didn't do this alone, we need your help to continue our work. Please join us as we continue down this path of being the safety net for our families and for our community. It's now my pleasure to introduce Jerry Schaefer, our treasurer. Jerry. Joe, my video is off. Can you, you have to un... Sorry about that. 
technologically challenged. Uh, thank you, Joe. Uh, the club went into 2020 with a very optimistic budget of $2.86 million. In March, when the implications of COVID for the club became clear, we took quick action. We sought special COVID funding opportunities from a variety of sources. We applied for and were granted a paycheck, paycheck protection program loan under the CARES Act. And we were, took a very conservative approach on expenses. The result of these actions for 2020 put us in a very strong position at the end of the year. So we were ready for more uncertainty in 2021. For 2021, we took a more conservative approach to our budget. We budgeted $2.67 million for the year. And we applied for and received approval for a second PPP loan. Though we are finding this year to be tracking slightly behind budget and anticipate the year to be one of the toughest years yet, our finance committee continues to meet every other month and we are optimistic for the third and fourth quarter. As you may or may not be aware, 74% of our budget comes directly from philanthropy, grants, foundations, events, and donors like you. If you would like more information about the club's finances, you, the annual report is published and available on the website, www.bgcnewport.org. The report is a testament to the generous and loyal community support we receive. Thank you. Now let's hear from Kelly Cohen, our Director of Development. Thank you, Jerry. We navigated the turbulent waters of 2020 with great success, thanks to the loyal and generous support from our community. While we missed gathering for our annual signature events, we still wish to recognize our 2020 award recipients for our annual event that we call Growing Together. Our 2020 Youth of the Year was awarded to Tisa Ford. The Volunteers of the Year were our DOC crew, which includes Ray Gomes, Chuck Taylor, Brian Garvey, Terry Houlihan, John Misrek, and many members of the Newport Fire Department. The J Jacob Cronell Award was awarded to Cindy Marshall, and the David Lees Jr. Memorial Award goes to Alan Corcoran. Outstanding service was given to Jerry Willis, and our outstanding partner is Kate Brewster from the Johnny Cake Center. The Community Excellence Award was given to Gary Loftus, and our distinguished alumni is Kevin Smith. Please save the date for Growing Together for 2022, which will be held on Friday, April 1st. And we will finally have the opportunity to gather and celebrate these special awards that are so deserving. Last, uh, in April, we announced our 2021 Youth of the Year for Newport County, which goes to Novellis Hunter. Novellis is a senior at Rogers High School, graduating from the NADTAC program in cosmetology in June. She wishes to pursue a career in nursing. Novellis served over 250 hours of volunteer service and has been a club member for over 10 years. Our congratulations go to Novellis. As we continue to resume to some of our annual events, we are pleased to share that on Monday of this week, we are able to host our annual golf tournament at the Newport Country Club. This sold out event is a deeply rooted tradition hosted at Newport Country Club for 36 years and founded by the Corcoran brothers, Ned and Alan. Over the many years, this tournament has raised millions of dollars for the club and our kids. We are grateful to our hosts, the Newport Country Club and to the Corcorans for making this such a successful tradition. Last year, we celebrated our signature Newport Yacht Rendezvous with small hosted events at homes, on boats, and even the classic ship, the Oliver Hazard Perry. While it paled to compare to a gala of 425 guests, we are very grateful for the energy and support offered to keep this event alive during the pandemic. We're pleased to share that the Newport Yacht Rendezvous will be held Friday, August 13th, again at Safe Harbor Newport Shipyard. The format will still be a hybrid of in-person and online formats. 
to give an opportunity of something for everyone to celebrate the Boys and Girls Club. If you're ready to gather, we'll welcome you in limited quantities of guests at the shipyard. And for those that still wish to remain close to home, we will welcome small groups to gather and celebrate at home or on their boats. So we observe a table, our host a small event at home, all in any of these efforts will just continue to show their support for our kids and for the club. We continue to pivot and adjust to get to resumed all of the fundraising activities, and we look forward to being able to make new announcements as details arise. Our goals for 2021 are lofty, but we are inspired and energized. We wish to continue to share the good work that happens here at the club on a daily basis. The impact on our kids is visible every day. We welcome you to come for a visit take a tour and see the impact firsthand. I know you'll be very impressed. There are many ways you can remain involved with the club, like joining us here today on the Zoom. Please keep connected. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Visit our website often and help us spread the word of our club and our mission. As we often say through our hashtag, great futures start here. We thank you for your time today.